Hello, everybody, and welcome to Porsche Carrera Cup North America, presented by the Cayman Islands. My name's John Heintorf, and it's a real delight and honour to be taking you through the action here today. With the CN Tower in the background, looking down on the circuits, it's the NTT IndyCar weekend, and the sports cars are here as well, right in the middle of the Porsche Carrera Cup North America presented by the Cayman Islands uh, season and two races here this weekend north of the border for the first time for this new relatively new championship we had our first season of Pro Carrera Cup uh, last year as part of the IMSA package uh, just over uh, 2.8 kilometres if you prefer that's around about one and three quarter miles 1.794 uh, if you want to be absolutely perfect on that action areas at turn one then the long run down the back straight to turn three at the end of Lakeshore Boulevard uh, opportunity for an overtake maybe at turn five as you head on to Princess Boulevard and maybe turn eight uh, as well as you come back towards the end of the uh, the lap itself uh, it's been a busy old weekend for the teams and the drivers and not without incident either in the Porsche Carrera Cup at North America. Just 16 cars. Let's take a look at the Porsche grid for this first of two rounds this weekend. Just 16 cars taking the green flag. We've lost lost to TJ Fisher in a, an incident with Adam Adelson uh, which gained Adam a two race probation uh, for unnecessarily aggressive driving it was on the slowdown lap uh, and it was a big incident sadly the top racing team couldn't get TJ's car sorted in time for the race and the sixth place driver won't take uh, any further part this weekend at the back of the grid Alan Metney in the number 99 Kelly Moss racing team is the man who leads the pro category he's got some work to do there and his first uh, his first target will be Kyle Washington for GMG the number 32 car in 15th position uh, on row number seven John Getz for Wright Motorsports second in the AM class and Mark Kwame is not here he's the leader in the AM class at this point of the season so great opportunity for John to make up some points uh, on Mark in that championship Bill Smith is the best of the AMs and his top racing bright orange number 42 sits in 13th position and on the AM pole Moving up through the Pro-Am field, Thomas Collingwood for BGP Motorsports has the 69 car on the outside of row 6. Mark Mocironi for Mark Mortis is alongside him in the 84 in 11th position. On the fifth row, Adam Adelson with that probation hanging over him. The Premier Racing number 24 car is 8th, uh, uh, check that, ninth in the Pro and 10th overall. Pole position in Pro-Am, Efren Castro for Kelly Moss Racing in the number 65. And Efren with a great chance to gain some points back uh, on Alan Metney, who is at the back of the field. From here on in, it's all the Pro drivers. On the fourth row, Michael McCarthy for Kelly Moss Racing in the number 7 has Travis Wiley in the 77 in seventh position for Top Racing. Yeah, that's all the seventh. Will it be lucky for him today? On the third row of the grid, it's Jeff Kingsley for MDK Motorsports. The uh, Matt Kramick team, that's the pro number 43 car in sixth position. Baranchowski in fifth alongside him for Wright Motorsports in the 13th. Front two rows, Riley Dickinson for Kelly Moss is a quick starter in the 53 car. He's got Parker Thompson, one of four Canadians in the field. JDX Racing's number nine then on the inside of the second row. And on the front row, championship leader Kelly Moss Racing's Kai von Berlo from the Netherlands, but beaten to pole position by Trenton Estep in the number six MDK Motorsports car. Got the Taycan uh, leading them around at the moment. The number three, Kai van Berlo, is the championship leader and with a very, very handsome lead as well as they come round to the green flag. 199 points for Kai van Berlo, Park Thompson, his closest championship contender on 1-5-2. Tricky circuit here, straight down into a heavy braking area once they get the green flag, turning right off Princess Boulevard in front of the Princess Boulevard gate there. 
then through turn two onto the long run down Lake Shore Boulevard. Stand by for action, green flag is in the air and the roar of the flat six engine of the 16 cars head down towards that first right hander. Hold your breath, breathe in everybody and we've got everyone through. Looks uh, like a pretty decent start for all of the drivers and Trent and Esther leads away. Parker Thompson's come through in the second for GT X Racing in the shell car. Down the inside and takes the lead but goes way too deep and we'll have to find reverse on the sequential gearbox of his car. Oh, that is such a shame for the Canadian driver wanting to do well. This is the first time that this version of the championship has been up north of the border and only the second time we've been on a street track, the first time in April this year, down at Long Beach, another share of the weekend with IndyCar. 40 minutes were on the clock when we started. Two Kelly Moss teammates right together as they go through to start another lap. Kai Van Berlo and Riley Dickinson. It was ambitious to say the least from Parker Thompson in the number nine Kelly Moss race, racing car. And that's cost him a huge amount of time. However, if we know anything uh, about that young man is that he will fight back. So S-step then from Van Berlo by about 1.8 seconds after that mistake from the Kelly Moss racing driver, uh, from, excuse me, from uh, the JDX racing driver. Three different classes here. The cars are all the same. Seven pro cars. Uh, sorry, nine pro cars. Uh, and Michael McCarthy not starting. That uh, on the grid, so he must have only started uh, with 15 cars as they came to the line. Five pro arms and two arms. Championship leader in the arm category, Mark Kwame, not here this weekend. So a great chance for John Getz to make up some points. Keep an eye on for the number 57 right motorsports car. He's got Bill Smith ahead of him in the number 42, the bright orange car. He can't miss that one out on the circuit but it is Trenton Estep for MDK Motorsports who leads out Trenton fourth position in the championship will be looking to make a dent in the cars ahead of him it's championship leader Kai Van Berlo from Parker Thompson in the championship then Riley Dickinson in the 53 then Trenton Estep who leads this race and Kai Van Berlo not used not been at the front of the field. He's dominated this season, came second in the championship last year in its inaugural season with the 992 Porsche Carrera Cup car being debuted last year and Carrera Cup North America presented by Visit Cayman Islands, one of only five championships that got in around the world. And already into the pit lane, John Getz. Oh, that's a disaster for the man second in the arm championship and trying to make up ground on Mark Kwame, who's not here this weekend. And that is very unusual to have mechanical issues. John did have a little incident earlier on at the weekend, so it may, be, may have been a consequence of that further down the field. Battles going on as the number 77 tries to go around the outside. That's Travis Wiley in fifth position. And he's got Varanchowski right ahead of him in the red, white and black car. That's the number 13. Fourth and fifth position. Top three getting away. Estep van Berlo and Riley Dickinson have toddled off into the distance here. And the next capital cars. Chosky goes a little bit deep. And that's all the opportunity. Travis Wiley needed as he nipped through. By the door was barely open, barely ajar there. Forced open by the 77 of Travis Wiley and the top racing team who were desperately disappointed not to be able to get TJ Fisher's car back in after that incident in free practice. Well, perhaps a little bit of better news for them. 
as Travis moves up into fourth position and sets off in hot pursuit of the top three. So now Varanchowski has Jeff Kingsley for MDK Motorsport to think about. As they head down into the right-hander, start of the lap. Quickly into turn two and on the Lakeshore Boulevard. Wind the cars up to terminal velocity. 65, 170 miles an hour before braking for the hard right-hander that takes them onto Ontario Drive through the kink in turn four. That's where the pass happened last time in the five. Princess Boulevard. Meantime, at the front of the field, Trent and Estep for MDK Motorsports in the GT Silver and that dark blue. Dark grey, rather, with the uh, gold accents on that car. He's coming to the end of the lap through turn 11. Back on Princess Boulevard. Pit lane on the left-hand side. Fantastic noises from these four-litre flat six. What sweet music they make. Just over 500 horsepower. And the same mode of power unit as in the streetcar. The 992, the eighth version of the venerable... Porsche 911. 911 celebrates its 60th anniversary next year. And the 992, very sophisticated car. If you're lucky enough to have one on the street, you buy the GT3 version. It really is a road going version of these race cars. It has the same engine, although not the same gearbox, with PDK or the Beautiful six-speed stick shift manual. Whereas these cars, of course, have the race gearbox, which is still paddle shift, single clutch rather than the Porsche Doppel clutch machine. The car still does have the double wishbone front suspension. Pretty certain. These cars don't have the option of the Borsa stereo that you get on the, the 992. Stripped out for racing. New aero package for the Carrera Cup cars when this car came in last year. The new body shape and the new rear wing allowing the teams uh, a lot more adjustment to the aerodynamics. You notice the rear wing is mounted with what's called a swan neck. That's to keep the supports of the wing out of the airflow and tidy up the aero onto that rear aero foil and it allows the car to be balanced between front and rear rather well. Big slide by the number 13, Varanchowski. Fifth position for him. Fighting against the MDK Motorsport 43 of Jeff Kingsley right in his wheel tracks at the moment. Just the 17 cars making the trip across the border. That's around about a half of a normal race weekend. With uh, nine pros coming through. Last year being the first ever pro category for Porsche single manufacturer racing in North America. Sebastian Prior, the Young Channel Islander, Guernseyman, took the championship ahead of Kai van Berlo. Although Kai won more races last year, but a couple of non-finishes, particularly at VIR, really hurt his championship chances. But he's making no mistake this year, the man from the Netherlands, sitting in second at the moment, but two seconds away from the back of Trent and Esther. Let's check in with some of the battles further down the field. Efren Castro leads Pro-Am in the very noticeable number 65 with the purple and black livery and he's sitting in behind Adam Adelson for Premier Racing which is a pro class, class driver but right behind him he's got Marco Cironi in the 84 Mark Mortis car and they are battling for first and second in the Pro-Am category now the cars are all the same there's no difference in state of tune or the model of the cars it is the drivers who determine which category you are in.
draw obviously speaks for itself in the pro-am and am category there's an element of uh, how much experience uh, of driving the entrance has and also how much experience of life because their age comes into it as well Chosky fighting off Jeff Kingsley there they were side by side for a moment as they went through turns one and two and now on to Lakeshaw Boulevard hugging the right hand wall trying to get the run down into the right hander turn three such distinctive exhaust notes from these flat six engines one of the truly great wonders of the automotive world the four litre Porsche flat six all of the flat sixes are lovely but I do think that this particular engine which is still for the moment at least can buy and thank goodness for that in some of Porsche's cars including the GT3 and the GT3 Touring I think it is possibly the, the ultimate iteration and it's been used in these racing cars down through the years to great effect the cars that went to Le Mans were bored out to almost 4.2 remember asking why it was 4.2 one nine something one eight something and then one of the engineers showed me an engine in strip down and frankly there was no more room between the bores of the cylinders that was it that's as far as they could go but for these cars just the four litres just the four litres and 507 ish horsepower going through the rear wheels of course still this battle going on Baron and Jeff Wright versus MDK at the front of the field. Trent Nestep still leading. Fastest lap for Kaipan Berlo in second for Kelly Moss Racing. He's still two seconds back. You do get points for fastest lap and for pole position here. Riley Dickinson, another one second or so behind in third. Top three separated by three seconds. Then a big gap back to Travis Wiley, who has cleared off after he passed Baranczewski in the number 13 red white and black car big squirt of power coming to the end of the lap through the tricky left hander there's a change of camber there oh, big slide from Marco Chirun no it was Efren Castro who had a big slide coming through turn 11 now is that going to slow him down as they head down Princess Boulevard and turn right onto Canada Boulevard keep your eyes on what's going on in the background yeah he's still there Castro but he's defending really hard to the bright yellow car that's Marco Cironi Parker Thompson fighting his way back through as well will be on the back of these guys remember Parker Thompson was right at the sharp end of the field and took the lead for a moment at turn one uh, at turn three at lap one but then didn't make the corner and Thompson fighting his way back through but he's dropped well over half a minute to the leaders ah flashing the lights now Jeff Kingsley well that gives you an extra everybody knows whether you're on uh, the real world full metal racing or in the virtual world that gives you an extra 15 horsepower in your head not sure what Jeff Kingsley thinks my run's gonna oh he's flashed his headlights okay absolutely I'll pull over I'll give you the position Jeff absolutely Honestly, he knows he's there, <laughs> I promise you. The door mirrors are very good on these cars. You can see quite a lot of the flared rear arches on the 992. A very good view out the back. Jeff pulling out to the right-hand side again, showing the headlights. Spot the different classes, by the way. The pros with the white headlights and the white mirrors light coloured mirrors and wing end plates the other classes slightly different headlamp running lights oh great run by Jeff Kingsley this time as they head through turn 7 into the right hand at turn 8 and defensive again from Chosky Chosky just Again, gets on the throttle in the middle of that short straight between 9, 10 and 11. But for the moment, 
Wright. He's got a bit of a gap behind him. Behind them. Adam Adelson is just ahead of Efren Castro and Mark Muccironi who's still battling for Pro-Am. In Am at the moment, it's the bright orange number 42 of Top Racing's Bill Smith in 12th position. And John Goetz, John Goetz still in the pits, I'm afraid. Second place in the championship, so really not happening for him. down into turn three then up a little rise for the kick to turn four see a little more rise and fall to this track than you'd think with it being a straight circuit here at Toronto or Toronto as the locals have told me it's got to be pronounced Step still out front with about a two seconds lead as we're coming down towards half distance in about four minutes' time. Second race here tomorrow, full championship points being scored. And still the best battle on the battle on the track is for fifth position, Warren Choksi. Choksi for Wright Motorsport and Jeff Kingsley battling for fifth and sixth in the pro category. Thompson putting in some good lap times. Trying to pull back on the leaders. But still at the moment, round about half a minute away. Travis Wiley picking up the pace in four positions. Just put his fastest lap in of the race. 112, 547. Leader beginning to lap some traffic now. Carl Washington for GMG Racing in the Ukraine flag coloured car, the half and half yellow and blue machine. Now, has that slowed him down a little bit? Kai van Berlo may be a little bit closer. We'll get the draft down Lakeshore Boulevard. Time certain race, 22 and a half minutes still to go. I don't think van Berlo's caught the number 32 of Carl Washington in the best of places, to be honest. Maybe Riley Dickinson can. Make a little bit of hay on that one. Uh, nice driving from Kyle in the 32. Just eased over, went offline. It's always been dangerous, particularly on a street circuit. Offline, a bit dusty here. Flash of the lights from Riley Dickinson just to let Kyle know he's there. He'll flick to the inside. But Kyle this time decides to steal. I think he frightened himself. He gets a little love tap for his trouble there. But I think Kyle Washington, when he went offline at turn five to allow... Riley Dickinson's teammate through. He got some push, he got some understeer and started heading to the wall and I don't think he liked that, which is why he stuck on the racing line. Every driver's briefing that any driver's ever been here in the world, including me, in my all too few outings as a, a driver. I never say a racing driver. I drive a car on a track and other people are there as well. They always tell you, let the faster cars find their way by. You stay on your racing line. Parker Thompson making up positions. That was a pass on Marco Cironi for ninth place. The bright yellow car, not in the same class as Parker. It's damage limitation for him. Challenging for the lead on the first lap, but just maybe misjudged his breaking distance a tad. So difficult to make up positions here. What he really wanted was an intervention and an appearance of the Taycan safety car, all electric Porsche. that is by the way lower centre of gravity than a 911 a better aerodynamic coefficient than a 911 and man it's quick it's a big thing and it is a quite a heavy thing with the big battery pack which is all in the floor but it can hustle along 
indicate they're going for Marco Cironi, just telling Parker Thompson to go. Let him go down into turn one. Smart move. That hasn't affected the point scar for Marco Cironi. Uh, for, excuse me, for uh, Efren Castro in the 65. Marco Cironi behind them. Smart by Efren. He's looking for points gained on Alan Metney, who's 40s way up, by the way, past Kyle Washington and Tom Collingwood. So Metney in the number 99, I fly Kelly Moss Racing Porsche. He's in the third in Pro-Am, but he's still 10 seconds behind the second-place driver, Marco Cironi, in the bright highlight, the yellow car. But he has just put in the fastest lap of the Pro-Am race. A very credible one, 13-8. his own fastest lap, the 13-3, the best lap of the Pro-Am class, and that is Efren Castro. Trenton Estep, though, has led from the green flag, from pole position. Estep currently in fourth position. If he wins this, he'll get 25 points. We're a little bit closer to Riley Dickinson, who at the moment nine points ahead of him. Check that, 11 points ahead of him, excuse me. And Riley is behind him on the road. Two places behind him. Thank you for joining us with Porsche Carrera Cup North America, presented by Visit Cayman Islands. So far, a demonstration drive by Trenton Estep, MTK Motorsports. Paul sitting driver, almost four seconds to the good now on the championship leader, Kai von Perlo for Kelly Moss Racing. In the green and white, number three. His teammate, Riley Dickinson, in the 53s, another six and a half seconds further back. Check that, another two and a half seconds further back. A bit of lappery going on as well as... Number 77, Travis Wiley in fourth position, goes by Kyle Washington in the blue and yellow GMG racing. Porsche is there, head on to Lakeshaw Boulevard. It's John Hindoff with you and the action this weekend for this race and the one tomorrow. 17 cars made the trip. We expected 16 after the big incident for TJ Fisher, the top racing car, not able to be... Uh, repaired by the team after the incident with Adam Adelson, which saw Adam receive a two-race probation for overly aggressive driving on a slowdown lap. Meantime, Parker Thompson fighting back after a first lap snafu down at turn three when he was going for the lead. And now moves up past Adam Adelson into seventh position in the pro category. Thompson, one of four drivers who proudly have the Maple Leaf on their passports and their overalls. Jeff Kingsley comes from the Toronto suburb of Ajax. Um, Parker Thompson, by the way, from Alberta, up the Red Deer. Tom Collingwood is from. St John's in Newfoundland. Marco Cironi calls Tonto, Toronto his home. Toronto, as I must call it. It's corrected on that when we were at uh, Canadian Time Motorsport Park a couple of weekends ago for the IMSA series. Still a step then by a margin of five seconds. However, Riley Dickinson is closing in on his Kelly Moss teammate. We've got not quite a battle for, th for second and third with 15 and a half minutes to go, but we've certainly get some, got something brewing here. Riley in third position in points at the moment. He stands on 127 coming into the weekend. Parker Thompson down the field, but fighting back is on 152 in 
second position and Kai van Berlo directly ahead of Riley Dickinson on the streets of Toronto at the moment. He's championship leader coming in this weekend with 199. Now Trenton will have taken the points for pool position. Kai van Berlo currently holds the fastest lap. And there's a potential of uh, three points available if you clean up Paul and fastest laps. Bill Smith in the number 42 will be the next car to be lapped by Kai von Berlo. Now Bill in that bright orange top racing car leads the AM category and he's a wily competitor. The AM cars are the ones with the yellow headlight dots at wing mirrors and wing end plates. Or door mirrors should I say pretty certain he'll just pull out and let the guys go through and that's exactly what he does down into turn three nice job by the man with kung fu saloon on the side of his car actually got his uh, driver's side his left hand side door mirror folded up a little bit there's been a wee bit of contact on the left hand side of bill smith's car as he's been fighting his way through yeah there's a little witness mark as well on the livery of that bright yellow machine but he's still leading the arm category That gives him the opportunity to perhaps gain some points on the AM um, leader. Mark Kwame is not here this weekend. Bill Smith in a tight battle with John Getz for second place. Just a point separating him coming in here. So Bill's going to go into second position if he holds this. And he'll trim the lead considerably. Came in here on 138. Uh, John Getz on 139 is in the pits. Mark Guami not here this weekend on 172. But if Bill wins both races this weekend in arm, um, he will take the championship lead from Mark Guami. Just under 13 minutes to go. Efren Castro leading the Pro-Am category in the purple and black number 65. That's a comfortable five-second lead now to Mark Lucciaroni. And this again is good points for Efren. He, uh, he had last year stealing the championship at the last race. He's... Uh, just over a race win behind Alan Metney at the moment. Scored nothing at all in the first round at Sebring and that really hurt his championship chances. That's really the sort of numbers he's behind. He's on 124 at the moment to Metney's 153. And you would have expected him to get a decent haul of points. Mark Mocciaroni, second place in the Mark Mortars. Very striking black and bright yellow car. Second place in the AM, uh, pro AM category. Eight seconds ahead of Alan Metney, who'll be trying to close him down. And once again, Kyle Washington watching his mirrors. Keeping an eye on that gap between teammates Kai von Berlo and Riley Dickinson at the front of the field second and third Jeff Kingsley still right on the back of Varen Trotsky as well for fifth and sixth position Jeff's got alongside a couple of times but not been able to turn it into a pass the two white and green cars Riley's the one with the uh, red front valance uh, on the car that's how you tell them apart Many orange anyway. Otherwise, the liveries are pretty identical. At the front of the field, though, Trenton Estep is uh, bossing this race. Still five seconds, the gap. And despite the fastest lap going to Kai van Berlo, they've not really closed in. Kai, an interesting story. Young driver from the Netherlands, from Holland. Second in the championship last year. Came across to the States, not to go racing, but to get himself educated down in Florida. 
got the opportunity to do some racing whilst he was here, which unsurprisingly, he jumped at and grabbed with both hands. Very nearly won the championship last year, second to Sebastian Priel, but this year, staying with Kelly Moss doing a cracking job. Riley Dickinson, Kelly Moss teammate, but of course driving for each, not driving for the team, driving for themselves. And the big prize always with Porsche Carrera Cup is the end of season opportunity to go to the young driver test and potentially be picked up by Porsche as a supported driver. Porsche with uh, lots of irons in the fire at the moment, coming back into the top category of sports car racing in IMSA with their new GTP Porsche 963. And that'll be Team Penske Porsche. Team Porsche Penske next year. Both in the IMSA Championship and over in the FIA World Endurance Championship. That means going to Le Mans for the 24 hours. Brand new GT3 car as well. Same body shape. The 992 is this car, that's a beast. These cars are pretty aggressive looking. The new car really should come with an 18 certificate. It's a scary looking thing. Can't wait to see and hear it out on the track. So good time for Porsche, a lot of projects going on. And good time to be a Porsche works factory support the driver and that's what these guys in the pro category are looking forward to eight and a half minutes to go then and it is still a five second gap between Trent and Estep for MDK Motorsports Kai Van Perlo our championship leader in second but now being closed down on by Riley Dickinson still just about a second between them maybe a tad more last eight minutes of this race now, it's particularly warm today, and this is a uh, high wear or uh, an abrasive circuit being a street track. The cars slide around a lot, that causes the tyre temperatures to go up and to use the tyres. Drivers call it high deg, high degradation. So in the last few minutes of this race, we might see performance drop off if the drivers have not looked after their tyres in the early part of the race when the cars are full of race fuel. Still Jeff Kingsley looking at the back of Baron Choksi's car. He will know every nut, bolt, nick, tear and scratch in the livery, won't he? the 28th lap and he's pretty much been at or around half a second behind that uh, fifth place car Varen's just put his fastest lap of the race in on lap 27 as they go at the lap number 28 now so he's responding so he's got a little bit of performance left in him and the Michelin tyres we've got the charging Parker Thompson coming back from the very back of the field remember Went for the lead at turn three, lap one, overcooked it, missed his breaking point, and then was well over 30 seconds back. But he's chasing back now, trying to capture as many points for his championship charge. as close as he has been sometime to the red, white and black number 13 of Varen Troxy for right now the sports as they come round to complete another lap through turns 10 and 11 back on to Princess Boulevard good to see the sports cars attracting a good crowd on qualifying day here for the NTT IndyCar Championships and thanks for staying around I know that uh, you're hearing us on the PA now as well thank you hope you're enjoying the sights and sounds of these fantastic GT sports cars just 
trying to work out whether Parker Thompson is going to get into the top five. It'll be a heck of a drive if he does. Down to turn one for our leader. Just under five minutes to go. They're lapping at the moment around about a minute and 11. safe in second place as he goes around turn number three at the end of Lakeshaw. I wonder how hard Riley Dickinson would try if he got a wee bit closer to him. Parker Thompson catching that battle for fifth and sixth. So he's got another two places right ahead of him as he drifts the car through turn one and really close to the concrete wall. We don't talk about track limits at circuits like this because if you're over the track limits you're into something hard turning through the right hand at three over the top of a little rise down through four turn five big patch of different surface there and that gets very greasy particularly at this time of day coming up to a quarter past four in the afternoon To the drives I think there's something like nine or ten different surfaces around this track typical street circuit and by no means is it billiard table smooth you've got street furniture as well with the drain covers all things that are unusual in a racetrack you wouldn't see that on a purpose-built circuit all adds to the challenge Thompson now right with the battle for fourth, fifth and sixth. Top racings, Travis Wiley a little bit further up the road, so it's fifth, sixth and seventh now. That is the interest. And second, second and third almost together as they finish their 30th lap. Two and three quarter minutes to go. There'll be this one and at least one more of this time certain race. It'll depend when Trent and Estep the leader crosses the line and Riley Dickinson as close as he's been since the start of the race now getting under a second down to about half a second yes yeah, six tenths as he went across the line that time and there's more traffic for Kai von Berlo Paul and two wins on the streets of Long Beach he's not going to complete the double here this weekend started on the outside of the front row That got jumped at the start by Parker Thompson of JDX, who's now right with Jeff Kingsley and Baron Troxky. Troxy still in fifth position, Kingsley still in sixth for the moment. But at the front of the field, Trent and Este. He's lead just starting to come down a little bit, but that'll be him just taking it easy, giving himself a wee bit more margin against the walls. Second and third can see him now as they cut past Kyle Washington in the GMG car. That's Marco Cironi, in fact. Here they come. I reckon it'll be one more lap after this one. Did not see the white flag that time around. Oh, and Bill Smith's in the wall. That's the arm leader. Right at the end of the lap, it's uh, turn eight. Oh, Bill, he's going to be annoyed with himself about that. The Kung Fu Salon car into the tyre stack. He hasn't hit the concrete, that's the good news. Now, can he reverse it out of there? He's found reverse, that's never easy to do on a racing car. We're still green at the moment, with only 39 seconds left to go. My worry would be if he pulled out of there and moved the tyre stack. Lead has gone through to start what will be the final lap. White flag for Trenton Estep. This time, 
There he goes, sees the white flag. Just on 1.75 miles to go. 2.8 kilometers. And he's got clear track down Lakeshore Boulevard. Big sigh of relief, I think, from Trent and Esteb. But behind him, the battle goes on between the two. Kenny Moss, road and race teammates. Van Berlo will hit the traffic first, but he's managed to ease out a little bit. Oh, he'll be delighted with that. Riley Dickinson just couldn't get any closer to him. He's got Alan Metney in the GT Silver number 99 right in front of him. But this has been an absolute demonstration. Pole position for Trenton Estep in the first recipient of the Tag Heuer Pole Position Award. And he's transformed that into a race victory. Just a corner to go. Back on to the start finish straight now. And Trenton Estep with his first victory of the 2022 Porsche Carrera Cup North America, presented by Cayman Island season, wins on the streets of Toronto. And he will... be very close to third position. Riley Dickinson came through in third, so the championship is tightening right up at the top of the field. Meantime, in the classes, Efren Castro in the number 65 will take the Pro-Am category from Marco Cironi for Mark Mortis in the 84. Alan Metney, who started right at the back of the grid, has fought his way past Thomas Collingwood and Kyle Washington for third place points. But that's going to close things up at the front of the Pro-Am field. Alan came in with a decent lead. 30-point lead or thereabouts, 29-point lead. So he's lost a little bit of that. So, congratulations to MDK Motorsports. Didn't quite get the trifecta. Pole position and the win, but the fastest lap going to second place, Kai van Berlo. But no doubt at all about the start of the show. And that is very definitely Trent and Esteb. And Bill Smith just losing it at the end of the race there. He'll hold on to the win in the AM category in the number 42. That'll do his championship standings, no problem. He did pull the car out of the... Uh, he did pull the car out of the, the barriers. Car's coming back into the pit lane. So the unofficial results then for first race of two on the streets of Toronto for the Porsche Carrera Cup. North America, presented by Visit Cayman Island, sees Trenton Estep win for MDK Motorsports, ahead of Kai von Berlo in second for Kelly Moss, and his teammate, uh, Riley Dickinson, makes it a 2-3 for Kelly Moss Racing. Those were your top three pros. In Pro-Am, Efren Castro beat home Mark Motors Racing's Marco Cironi. That's another win for Kelly Moss there, by the way. 65 from 84. And Alan Metney with a fighting drive. The championship leader then, uh, making sure that he got a decent haul of points, uh, although Efren Castro will close up on him. And in arm, it was Bill Smith from John Getz. John with problems, did not see him do uh, more than a handful of laps, I think just three laps at the start of the race. And Bill Smith ending up in the tyres at the end, but will still be uh, picking up the points for winning the category and therefore closing down Mark Kwame's lead, who wasn't here for the weekend. Uh, thank you very much indeed for being with us for that and uh, good to have your company. Uh, our great thanks to our camera operators and all the technical on site here at Toronto and, of course, back in Charlotte for our NASCAR Productions team. A fantastic race that was absolute domination from Trenton Estep.
Orney was headed for a breakfast of times when Parker Thompson went through at the start of the race on turn three, but he couldn't hold on to that. He fought back to sixth. Trenton Estep takes the victory, his first of the season on the streets of Toronto. And he'll be back to do it again with his MDX team again tomorrow. MDK win it then from two Kelly Moss racing cars. And Trenton Estep has got the best life on the streets of Toronto. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. So big congratulations to Trent Nestep as we'll see if we can get down to victory lane and hear what the winner has to say. In the Porsche Carrera Cup portion of today's events and next up will be the FEL Sports Car Championship Canada. So they're just preparing in the paddock. We'll take over pit lane in just a moment. It'll be a